What's going on guys? I'm Flynn Masters and welcome to my ranking of the top 10 non black jacket chefs in Hell's Kitchen history. So yeah, my last video I ranked the top 10 worst black jacket chefs. So kind of doing the opposite now and give praise to the best chefs to not earn a prestigious black jacket. So yeah, the way I'm going to go about ranking these chefs, one, I'm obviously going to look at how talented they were, especially compared to the chefs who did earn a black jacket over them. Now again, to be honest, I don't really remember anything challenge related and I don't remember like every little mistake these chefs make, but I do have a pretty good general idea of their performance. I'm also going to take into account the great chefs who got screwed out of a black jacket due to either dumb eliminations by Ramsey to keep around better TV characters or if they were eliminated in the black jacket lounge challenge. And I know a lot of people like that challenge as it really is intense and can spice things up, even putting the best chefs in danger. But that's the thing, Hell's Kitchen eliminations are almost always about how chef does in a dinner service. You know, save those cook for your life challenges for Master Chef or like in seasons 12 and 14 where the teams picked a weak chef. You know, that's more fair. To me, it's stupid that a chef can be great all season in the services and then go home due to a challenge. You know, when like in every other season before season 16, when Ramsey introduced the Black Jacket Lounge Challenge, these chefs would be a lot to make it to Black Jackets. So yeah, expect a good portion of the eliminated chefs from that challenge to be on the list. And finally, I'll be looking at other basic things like cast size and talent, you know, so don't expect anyone from really bad seasons to be on here since they had no competition. But with all that said, let's get this list started with number 10. We'll start off the list with someone who is pretty forgettable, but a large part of that is due to her just simply being an overall good chef who definitely deserved a black jacket, and that is Elizabeth from Hell's Kitchen Season 9. Now there's really not much I have to say about Elizabeth here, as she was never put up for elimination all season, and was very consistent. However, she didn't really have any standout performances, especially compared to the likes of Elise and Jennifer. And she started to have her flaws shown the last couple of services, so I can understand why she went home. Now I do think she should have obviously made it over Elise, but you know, I mean Ramsay was never going to let that happen. So even though Elizabeth wasn't anything outstanding, we've seen plenty of chefs who were either worse than Elizabeth or flat out bad who did make the black jackets. So I definitely think Elizabeth's performance warranted a black jacket and is good enough to earn her spot in my top 10. At number 9 is Fernando Cruz from Hell's Kitchen Season 13. Now Fernando is a bit of an interesting one here as he got off to a rough start, was in consideration to be the first boot of the season, and then got nominated in episode 2 after another bad performance. But after that, he straight up dominated the season. And here's the thing about Fernando, it wasn't like he was a standout leader or anything like that. It's just that the way he went about his performance was so amazing. Like I don't know, tell me if you guys agree, because I remember very clearly watching this live and people went crazy after he got eliminated. And for the audience to go crazy over losing a less than exciting character like Fernando I think it just goes to show just how precise he was in everything he did. I mean, Ramsey even said it himself, the way he plates his dishes and how smooth he is during service is quite remarkable. But speaking of Ramsey, his decision to eliminate Fernando here, I mean, it's just simply decision to keep Sterling around for just a bit longer. I mean, simple as that. And I'm sorry guys, but I think we can all agree that Sterling was the weakest out of the four nominated that night and had the worst overall performance that night as well. Plus, you could argue that Fernando should have been spared over Roe. So yeah, a decision where Ramsey simply wanted to keep around good TV for as long as possible. And unfortunately, Fernando picked the wrong night to have a bad night. Which, to be fair, it wasn't even that bad of a night for him. As the final eight was the charity night service, and Fernando Fernando simply fell two plays short on the risotto, but immediately got the final two plates and served the table on time. So again, how does that performance, combined with his amazing performance all season, cause him to be the boot here? So after his slow start, Fernando was absolutely amazing all season, defining his dishes to a T, and should have easily made it past the final eight round, which more than likely would have landed him a black jacket. So because of all that, he lands here at number nine. At number eight is the lowest ranked chef placement wise on the list. And while this person might not have made it to black jackets, even if he was given a second chance, his elimination was absolute BS as he was great all season. And that is Adam Pollack from season 19. I mean, like I said, Adam was amazing all season. Now communication wise, yes, he wasn't great and certainly didn't stand out as a leader on the blue team compared to chefs like Cody and Declan. But still, I don't think the guy made one mistake his entire time in Hell's Kitchen. And even in his elimination episode, he didn't make any mistakes. He just simply didn't command the kitchen like Ramsay wanted him to. And you know, say like Adam Havid struggling up until that point, you know, I can understand in that scenario that, you know, Ramsay would give him like one last shot to, you know, have a breakout performance. And in that case, you know, if he didn't, you know, stand out, I can understand sending him home. But Adam had been so good all season, with some people even saying he had a shot to make it to the finale, and he gets sent home over Mark after a below average leadership performance at best at the final nine? And again, to be fair, the competition in season 19 was amazing, so who knows if Adam even gets to the final five after this. But still, he was great all season, had a somewhat bad night, and got sent home because of that. 
So while it really was unfair to him, he at least gets a spot on my top 10 list, landing here at number eight. At number seven is one of the most lovable chefs in recent Hell's Kitchen memory, and another chef from season 19, and that is Nikki Hanna. Now let's be real here, she started off the season very badly, as she could have definitely gone home before the game even started on the signature dish challenge, and even though her nomination was voided in episode three, she was still rocky out the gate, and was obviously really nervous and not confident in her abilities to perform in the kitchen. Again, just not a great look. But my goodness, after her rocky start, she went on to have an amazing run, having so many standout dinner service and challenge performances, and her confidence and overall performance got better every single episode. But unfortunately, her great run ended not after a bad performance during the service, which is what the show is based around, but after a Master Chef like three part challenge. And like I said to start the video, a lot of chefs who were eliminated in these cooking challenges are going to be on the list, as it's just stupid to me that chefs like Nikki can be so great all season only to not even earn a black jacket due to a random three-part challenge. However, the reason why Nikki is lower than some of the other chefs you'll see on the list who were eliminated in this fashion is because while pretty much all the chefs above her I think were a lock to make it to black jackets if it was a normal dinner service, I'm not sure if Nikki would have been a lock. Like, I could see Nikki having a below average performance and Ramsay sending her home. You know, because let's be real, compared to chefs like Mary Lou and Corey, Nikki was nowhere near ready to be a head chef. And that's another thing, pretty much all the black jackets this season absolutely deserved it, maybe Maybe even more so than Nikki, with the only debatable one being Amber, but even Amber I don't think is a bad black jacket by any means. And even though Nikki grew so much throughout the season, her bad start and especially her lack of confidence is a big no-no for Ramsay, especially when it comes to making business decisions. So while Nikki had an unbelievable run in Hell's Kitchen and had higher highs than some other chefs above her, her start to the season was awful and she wasn't screwed as badly as some other chefs on the list. So she lands here at number seven. Now at number six, and I know a lot of people are gonna hate me for giving credit to this guy, but at the end of the day, despite his terrible behavior, he should have made it to the Black Jackets and that is Andrew Pierce from Hell's Kitchen season 16. And yeah, obviously Andrew had a terrible personality and cheated on his fiance on TV, but chef wise, he was really good. Now, when I did a rewatch of this season, I did notice that Andrew was a lot worse than he appeared. You know, I initially thought he pretty much dominated the blue team and that was the reason why he never got nominated. But no, he did have his fair share of mistakes, got the blue team kicked out a couple times, was a lot of the times the third option to go up for elimination. You know, so nothing major, but not as dominant as some other chefs on the list. But the big thing when it comes to to Andrew that puts him so high on the list is that again in pretty much any other season he makes the black jackets but season 16 was literally the first season that Ramsay introduced the now normal black jacket lounge competition. I mean flat out if this was any of the first 15 seasons Andrew either makes it in because it's the final six black jacket or Polly or Kim go home before him. So yeah, barring like a Nelka level bad performance, Andrew's almost a lock for Black Jackets if it is a service. And since season 16 was the first season to introduce this challenge, he was even more unprepared for it. And yes, I know the blue team sucked and the majority of the season 16 cast sucked, but Andrew still was a top four chef this season and absolutely deserved a Black Jacket. So he lands here at number six. Now at number five, a chef that was overshadowed due to the amount of talent in season 14, and that is Allison Rivera. And to be honest, because she was so overshadowed, I really don't have much to say about Allison, despite her being so high, as I don't remember how many mistakes or standout performances she had this season, due to the chefs like Megan, T, and Michelle taking up the spotlight. But I mean, the stats speak for themselves. Allison was never nominated for elimination, despite her being on the most talented team of chefs in Hell's Kitchen history. It really just goes to show how consistent she was and how unlucky she got that she just so happened to be put on the most talented cast in Hell's Kitchen history, as I think she's almost a locked black jacket in every other season. And even in her elimination, episode when she went home over Josh, I think most people would agree that Josh should have been the one to go home in that spot, especially after being given so many chances on the red team. But I think Ramsey just simply wanted that classic first black jacket underdog elimination that we've seen over the years. So when you combine her very consistent performance, being on the best team and cast in Hell's Kitchen history, and her somewhat unfair elimination, I think Allison is definitely an elite non-black jacket chef and she lands here at number five. Numbers four and three are two more chefs screwed over by the Black Jacket Lounge Challenge, with the first one being Kanae from Hell's Kitchen Rookies vs. Veterans. Now, to be honest, the thing with Kanae is that similar to Allison, I really don't remember much about her. Like, she didn't really stand out to me like she did for other people, as I've even seen people say she was the best chef this season. But nonetheless, she came into Hell's Kitchen going up against some serious competition, and she did absolutely incredible. Again, how dominant was she leadership-wise? I'm not sure, as I feel like 
like chefs like Mia and Ariel were more so the standout chefs this season in that regard. But still, she was not nominated one time all season. She made only a couple of mistakes throughout the season and was eliminated not due to a bad service or not stepping up, but due to a freaking challenge. I mean, it's so stupid at this point. And to be fair, the other five chefs were serious competition. So it might've just taken, you know, one bad service to send her home or heck not even a bad service, a below average service. But no matter what, it doesn't take away from the fact that Kane was super consistent all season on an extremely talented season and probably makes the black jacket in any other season. So when you combine all these positives, she lands here at number four. Now at number three is, in my opinion, the person most screwed over by the Black Jacket Lounge Challenge, Jennifer Normat from Hell's Kitchen All-Stars. Now, to be fair, I almost forgot Jennifer was on this season as she really was invisible compared to the rest of the cast. So I don't remember, again, I don't remember any standout moments she may have had, the amount of mistakes, you know, all that. But once again, just look at the stats. She was on an all-star season dealing with terrible personalities nonstop, and yet she was not put up for elimination one time all season, with Nick and Ben being the only other chefs this season not to be nominated. Obviously pretty good company. And like I've said multiple times now, if this was a normal Hell's Kitchen season that had a dinner service to determine the black jackets, she's basically a lot to make it to the final five in that case as not only would she make it in over Elise and Robin but I think she would be even a bigger lock than Millie and Michelle and another reason why Jennifer is so high is that this was a two-person elimination challenge for the Black Jackets as opposed to a one-person elimination challenge that we saw in season 16, 18, and 19. And in that case, I mean, we literally saw Jennifer do better than Elise and would have made it to the Black Jackets if Ramsey only decided to eliminate one person. And oh man, now just thinking about that, my goodness, how fitting would that have been? So Jennifer was super consistent in an all-star season, more than likely makes it to a Black Jacket had it been an old school season, like, you know, season nine, and also makes a black jacket had only one person gone home in a three-part challenge instead of two. So pretty much a bunch of very unlucky circumstances caused Jennifer to not be a black jacket, even though she absolutely deserved another one. And so while she unfortunately isn't in the top tier of chefs who earned a black jacket twice, she did have a top tier non-black jacket performance in my eyes, and she lands here at number three. Now at number two, and this chef didn't go home for any BS reason, but he is this high simply because he just flat out is an unreal chef who went home due to unfortunate circumstances. And that is Anton Testino from Hell's Kitchen season 12. And for me, when it comes to Anton, the dude wasn't just a solid chef, but he was a flat out dominant chef for not only the first couple of episodes, but for basically the entire first half of the season. I mean, he made like one mistake the entire first half, was far and away the best leader on the blue team, even leading the blue team to their first dinner service win when they nominated him as leader in episode six. He was great in challenges and in general was the clear front runner to win up until the final 10. And even after the final 10, his quote downfall wasn't that bad. Like his final, okay, his final 10 performance was pretty bad. But after he got a second chance on the red team, he had two straight good performances. And even in his elimination episode, he didn't do anything terrible. He just got really unlucky that the blue team had one of the best services ever. He was standing next to Sky, and in general, Season 12 cast was really strong. And just the simplest of downfalls causes a chef like Anton to stand out. And that's the thing about Anton, his downfall isn't that bad. It's just two below average performances at worst. But since he was so freaking dominant the first half of the game, I think these performances looked worse to Ramsey than they actually were. But no matter what you think of Anton's quote downfall, you can't take away from his Megan level of dominance the first half of the season. And that alone makes him top tier. And he ultimately just misses out on the top spot, landing here at number two. And at number one, the best chef in Hell's Kitchen history to not earn a black jacket. And to this day, it's still mind boggling to me that he didn't make the black jackets. And that is Anthony Rodriguez from Hell's Kitchen season 11. Now, first and foremost, the fact that he was on one of the worst blue teams ever is not a good look, as obviously his leadership abilities weren't top level enough to help the blue team actually win services and challenges. But still, I mean, how much can you really blame Anthony there? As there was only so much any person could do to help the blue team of season 11. He made one mistake in the first service after being one of the last chefs standing. And after that, I think he was pretty much flawless the rest of the competition. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. And even at the final seven, when he did struggle, it wasn't really that bad of a service, especially to warrant him getting eliminated over Zach. And I think the reason why Anthony went here is very clear. The show had been hyping up the blue team suck storyline the entire season, and Ramsey really wanted to fit the narrative of how bad the blue team had been by having only one man make the black jackets. 
And he knew if he sent home Anthony here, Zach would be the obvious boot for the final six, which would obviously leave John as the only black jacket male. So to me, that's even worse than when a good chef is eliminated over someone just because Ramsey knows the weaker chef makes for better TV. You know, this was flat out a calculated decision by Ramsey and you know, for that matter, all the producers because they knew Anthony was super talented and more than likely he and John wouldn't have another bad service and both of them in the black jackets wouldn't fit the narrative of the season. And that's the reason why Anthony is number one to me. Not only was he pretty much flawless throughout the season, but he was eliminated literally to fit a season narrative. You know, say what you want about the other dumb eliminations on the list, but I think this is the most obvious example of Ramsey making a terrible decision because this is reality TV. And unfortunately, storylines make for the best television. So between Anthony's dominance over the season and having easily the most unfair elimination out of everyone on the list, to me, that gives him the crown as the best non-black jacket chef in Hell's Kitchen history. So there you go, guys. My ranking of the top 10 best non-black jacket chefs in Hell's Kitchen history. If you guys like this video and want to see more Hell's Kitchen content on this channel, then smash that like and subscribe button. And let me know in the comments some videos about Hell's Kitchen that you would like to see from me. With all that said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.